Welcome to the Psalms of the Bible, Being Refreshed and Strengthened in the Psalms, Volume 1. My name is Nancy Gamalik and I'm the author. And today I'd like to give you an introduction into this study. This study covers Book 1 of the Psalms, which is Psalms 1 through 41. All right. So as we dive into this study, there are three pieces of uh, information that I want to give you. They will help you get so much more out of the study and to appreciate it that much more. All right. So the three things that I'd like to cover with you is the background or that some history to do with the Psalms. The second thing is Jesus's relationship to the Psalms or the Psalms relationship to Jesus. And the third thing is engaging with the Psalms genre or the type of writing that it is. So these three simple things will be such a blessing to you. I'm really confident of that. All right, so let's go ahead and open in prayer. Lord God, I just thank you for each and every woman who goes through the Psalm study, that you will bless her, you will open the eyes of her understanding, you will write your Psalms on her heart, that she will sing a song of joy as she goes through the Psalms and she gets to know you better and uh, praise and praises you more intimately. I thank you for all of these things in the life of each woman. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, great, thank you. Okay, so the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is just a little bit, just to put a toe in the water about some background with the Psalms. Chuck Swindoll notes that individual Psalms were written as far back in history as Moses' time, uh, which would be about 1440 BC before Christ, and all the way forward through the time of David and his son Solomon and up into the time of Ezra, when the Ezraites, they wrote some of the Psalms, and they believe those were people living uh, at Ezra's time. Um, they're thinking back when Ezra led people from captivity in Babylon back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, that at that time, some of the Psalms were written as well. So this time spans about a thousand years of different writing, but most of it's centered on David and the, around the time of David. Um, as you all know, the Psalms are the songs and the prayers of the Bible. Uh, they were used in Israel's early in their worship. Many of the Psalms have superscripts, some writing right before you uh, start what we call verse one of the Psalms. There's a little bit of italicized writing in your Bible. Those are superscripts. They often tell you the author and maybe sometimes the occasion of the writing. And uh, those superscripts tell us that many of these Psalms were dedicated to the choir director. And so we know they were a, a integral part of Israel's worship. When they came together, they used these psalms to worship the Lord in the, in the tabernacle and then later in the temple. They used these psalms through all kinds of memorials and celebrations and gatherings. And even to this day, the Jewish people still use the psalms. They have certain psalms they use at this memorial or this celebration or this gathering. And um, all through these thousands of years, the Psalms are very central to the life of God's people. Also, additionally, I want to mention that in the time of David and Solomon and going forward, the king of Israel, he was to lead the people in godliness before the Lord. He was to walk in godliness and lead the nation in living lives that spoke of worship and obedience to Yahweh. And so it's very fitting that David is the author of 73 Psalms. We know that he's also the author of two more that are attested to him in the New Testament. So altogether, half of the Psalms were written by David, and maybe some that don't even have an author could have been by David as well. So David as the king, was excellent in leading the nation into worship using the Psalms. 
Um, God Answers tells us that it is thought that the Psalms were collected and organized during the period after Israel's exile to Babylon. As the nation was being rebuilt, Ezra the scribe is likely the person responsible for compiling the work, organizing it into its existing five books and adding titles to Psalms for which authorship was known. So as I mentioned earlier, during Ezra's time, they, they believe, they don't know for sure, that Ezra the scribe may have compiled the Psalms into the form we have them now, into the five books containing, and uh, between those five books contains all the 150 Psalms. All right, here's a surprising bit of background on the Psalms. In the New Testament, the Psalms is the most often quoted Old Testament book. So more than any other book of the Old Testament, the Psalms is quoted in the New Testament. That gives you an idea of how important the Psalms are in the scripture and to the life of God's people. Zipping forward in history, you may already know that the Bible was the first book printed on the Gutenberg Press, which revolutionized the world when books could be printed and mass produced. Um, but of the Bible, the first part of the Bible that they printed were the Psalms. That's how important the Psalms are. Additionally, uh, the old British uh, preacher, Charles Spurgeon, he spent 20 years pondering the spiritual breadth and depth of the Psalms, and he wrote a seven volume exposition through them called The Treasury of David. He wrote over 400 sermons from the Psalms. His, his, uh, the Psalms, he knew the importance and the depth of the Psalms and it compelled him. Scholar Fred Zaspel says that Psalm 23 is probably the best known text in the world. Think about that for a moment probably the best known text in the world. And as a little bit of a agreement with what Fred says on my blog, uh, my author blog, I wrote in 20, 2021, six blog posts going through Psalm 23. And as the years have passed, those blog posts get more people looking at them than any other blog posts. And I believe it's because the titles on some of those blog posts come right out of Psalm 23. So when people are searching for Psalm 23, they find it. So that gives us a read, it gives me a read of how important and how well known and how sought out Psalm 23 is, which just speaks of the importance of the whole Psalter, the whole collection of Psalms. All right, moving on to the second thing I want to share with you as you dive into the Psalms, and that is Jesus's relationship to the Psalms or the Psalms relationship to Jesus. Again, uh, Fred Zasbell, who's the author of a book called How to Read and Understand the Psalms, he writes this important statement. The Lord Jesus Christ probably memorized the book. He quoted it often in his teaching ministry, in his debates with Jewish leaders, in his final hours on the cross, and in his resurrection ministry to his apostles. In all these scenarios, he demonstrated that the Psalms spoke of him. And that's a powerful statement, and it's true. So uh, we talked about the Psalms being the most quoted in the New Testament. Uh, well, Jesus quoted the Psalms often. We think of some of these instances when he taught. Uh, we see in the Beatitudes and in the Sermon on the Mount, he talked about the, the blessed, who, is, who the blessed were, and who the, what was evil and wicked and the contrast between the two. It's very prominent in the Psalms and it's prominent in the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. Additionally, in Jesus' final hours on the cross, when the only thing pouring out of him is what's stored up in his heart, um, he quotes Psalm 22, 1, about why have, have thou forsaken me? And then in his resurrection ministry, we learn from Luke 24, 44, that he told his apostles, 
He told them that the law, the prophets, and the Psalms were written of him and that they all needed to be fulfilled, find their fulfillment in him. And he explained all of that to them. So you can see the importance of the Psalms uh, in relationship to Jesus. Jesus would have prayed the Psalms. He would have sung the Psalms. He would have likely had them memorized. And so that's really important for us to think about and to know. Additionally, just to take this a step deeper, uh, most Psalm scholars believe that we can speak about the Psalms as the prayers and songs of Jesus. And we see that when we are going through the Psalms, David will be crying his heart out about something, and then it will flip into something that we know is expressly about Jesus, or could only be fulfilled through Jesus. And so we just see Jesus' voice, his prayers, his praise just woven all throughout the Psalm. And so that means that when you and I are praying and singing and studying the Psalms, it's as if we are kneeling down beside Jesus or standing up beside Jesus and we're praying his words after him. It's very powerful and very intimate. All right, the third and uh, last area that I want to equip you with as you head into the Psalms is some tips on engaging with the Psalms based on the type of writing that they are. It's uh, the genre that they are. And so the Psalms are poetry. That's the type of writing that they are. And so the difference between ordinary writing or prose and poetry is that poetry has much, much more figurative language in it. Figures of speech, images, lots more words that create images in our hearts and our minds. Like somebody is who delights in the word of God they're like a tree planted by rivers of living water. They, they flourish, they bear fruits. So the image of the tree planted by the waters is it's an analogy, it's an image, it's a figure of speech. And poetry is filled with much more of them. That's why like song lyrics, sometimes they're able to touch our heart in special ways that ordinary prose doesn't because of their beautiful figurative language, the, the images that they stir in our hearts. So the, what does that mean to us as we go through it? How do we engage with poetry? Well, the important thing is to notice these figures of speech and not to speed over them to try to find out the timeline, uh, but to take time with these figures of speech read through them slowly, reread them, picture them in your mind. Take a moment, pause, and imagine yourself sitting under that tree by the rivers of living water bearing fruit in season and how wonderful that is. And that's us as we delight in his word. We're fruitful, we're, we're flourishing. So take time with these word pictures to understand what the author is trying to convey by picturing them, spending time there. Just to actually in summary, I want to say, think about the this background tips that I gave you about the Psalms itself, how it was put together, about Jesus's relationship to the Psalms, which is really powerful and wonderful, and then about gauging the Psalms with all their powerful, uh, words creating images. Lastly, I want to wrap up by giving you a few tips with your study guide to help you uh, familiarize yourself with it. When I wrote this study guide, I was using the New Living Translation. So as I give you tips on each of your Psalm guide pages, giving you tools, I'm teaching you or having you practice Bible study methods on the Psalm guide page that you will use which, with each Psalm journal page. You may not quite understand a question I give you without looking at it in the NLT. So I would suggest if anything is not clear to you that you look at the Psalm, read it in the NLT as well as whatever version you love using and that might uh, help you understand my comments better. So additionally, as I just mentioned, I had two aims in mind when I wrote this study, and one of them was to either teach or to practice using 
Bible study skills. So at the back of your study, you'll see a whole index of, it's on page 139, of all these various Bible study skills that you'll either learn or practice as you go through this volume one. You'll see there's quite a lot of them. And so I want you to learn how to use those skills or practice using those skills all the while enjoying and being enriched and blessed in the Psalms. Uh, this volume one is written with the basics of Bible study skills and some of the introductory aspects of the Psalms. And I have also written volume two, which covers book two and book three of the Psalms. And it is, uh, it's more advanced. It introduces more things to understand about engaging with the Psalms. And so it's great to start with volume one and enter it that way. At the back of your study guide, you'll see pages for putting your favorite Psalms and your favorite verses. And I think that's really worthwhile because you can go visit those later and remember some of your journey and also have a word fitly spoken to give to others in need. There's also themes pages. There's a page where you can write your own themes. Perhaps as you're going through, you really want to collect themes that have to do with God's rescue of you. Maybe that's important to you in this season, especially. And so you can collect scriptures or Psalms that really focus on that. I think that will be a blessing to you later Additionally, each psalm journal page on the right-hand side of your spread has the same prompts that you'll journal on. And I usually help you fill out one or two of those prompts, but feel free to do all five of the prompts on your journal pages. If you have the time and the energy, it would be a blessing to you to, to respond to all five prompts, but you don't have to if you're short on time or this is just all new to you. And lastly, I just want to invite you to engage with, there's a lot of great music out there that the, the lyrics come right out of the Psalms. So I encourage you to Google and find some of that music and put it with your study. Additionally, you can find some great art or you can do your own art about some of these images that the Psalms has. Um, and I think it will really enrich your study. So I just, God bless you as you enter into this study through the Psalms. I hope it's a wonderful, wonderful time for you.